Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on dockerizing our Django applications. So we're going to be starting from scratch on getting started with Docker Desktop, then we will learn how to create our Docker file, build our Docker image, then run our Docker container and I'm also going to show you how you can clean up all of your Docker resources such as clearing your cache and whatnot and also at the end how to manage environment variables and how you should go about that process. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that you want to do is you want to download Docker Desktop for your operating system. So as always, I will be sure to attach all of the links that I um, utilize in my video tutorials in the description below. So what we can do is head on over to docker.com to products and Docker Desktop. And here on this page here, we can download for Windows if we're on a Windows based system. If however, you are on a Mac OS device, you're going to want to download it for Mac OS, etc. And of course for Linux, if you're on a Linux based device. So what we can do, since I am on Windows, I'm going to say download for Windows. Okay, and that is going to download the setup wizard. So all you need to do then is you're just going to have to be patient as your device downloads the Docker desktop setup wizard. And once that's been completed, we're going to go through the process of installing Docker desktop onto our system. So all we need to do is just give it some time and then we can continue from there. Right, so welcome back. So as we can see here, we have downloaded Docker Desktop. So let's go ahead and run the installer. So I'm going to click on it. Okay, and let's just give it a moment to open up. And then we can go through the steps that are required for installing it onto our machine. So your screen may dim as a security warning. So all you need to do is say yes to install the Docker desktop installer. Okay, after which it's going to go on ahead and open up the uh, installation process here. So as we can see here, it's going to be initializing Docker desktop. It's going to verify the package and it's going to set everything up. So we can see here that we need to choose if we want to add a shortcut to our desktop for Docker desktop. I'm going to keep it as is and say okay. And now it's going to go ahead and unpack all the files and install um, Docker Desktop for us. So all we need to do is we're just going to want to be patient as this process is unfolded. And then I'll show you what will be the next set of steps as we continue with this installation. All right, so welcome back. As we can see, Docker Desktop was successfully installed. So what we can do now is we can just go ahead and say close. And as we can see, we have successfully installed Docker Desktop. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to head on over to our um, machine. And we can see here we have that shortcut here on our desktop known as Docker Desktop. So let's go ahead and open this up. So let's um, double click to open it up. Now, it may take a moment to open up. So again, we just need to be a little bit patient here as we wait for it to open up. And then what I'll do is as soon as it's been opened, we can go through the details. So the first thing that you want to do is you just want to accept the Docker subscription service agreement. So you can go ahead and click on accept. Okay. And after which we're just going to need to wait for it to open up. So now, as you can see, we want to just finalize the last touches of installing Docker desktop. So you can either use the recommended settings or you can use advanced settings here. So we're just going to keep it on the basic settings for now and we can just say finish. Okay. So make sure that you followed all of the steps up to now, then your screen is going to dim and you just want to say yes. And as you can see here, we are now set up and into Docker Desktop. Now you can either go ahead and sign in if you have an account or you can create an account or you can just say continue without signing in. So we're just gonna keep it simple for now. So we can say continue without signing in. You can go ahead and set some details here and complete the survey. So if you scroll down, you can just say skip survey. There we go. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and 
wait for our Docker engine to start. So at first, like you saw, it said um, Docker engine stopped. So we just want it to start up the Docker engine. Let's make sure we maximize the screen. Now this can take um, a moment to set up the Docker engine. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video. Once it's been set up and it is ready, we can continue from there. So let's just give it some time. All right, so welcome back. So as we can see now, we now have a few options available to us and the Docker engine has been started. So the first thing that we can see here is containers. So in this section here, you're going to see a list of all of your running containers that you have set up for your application. We also have images here. So in this section here, you're going to see all of your images that you've built with Docker. We also have a few other areas such as volumes, builds, and Docker Scout. You also have the ability to add extensions as well, which you can set up. Now there's of course a lot to Docker, but we just want to keep it quite straightforward. So the only sections I want you to be concerned about is containers, because this is going to house all of the containers that we have up and running and our images, which we will be building in this video tutorial. So just something to keep in mind and be aware of. All right, so that's it for this part on setting up Docker Desktop and just making sure that we've got it all set up and ready to go. And the next thing that we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on installing um, a G Unicorn and to start the initial steps of creating our Docker file. So that is what we're going to do in the next set of, um, next part of this video, should I rather say. So before we get started with creating our Docker file and setting up all the essentials, the first thing that I want to make sure is that you all have a Django project that you want to Dockerize your application with. Now I assume most of you already have this set up and envisioned, but just to be a little bit more explicit, let's just go through that and cover it. So as we can see here, I have a simple application, it allows me to register and log into my um, app. And of course, if I look here in my project in Visual Studio Code, it's structured as follows. My project's called Elevate. I have a SQLite database. I also have a simple app called CRM. And as you can see, it's very basic and very simple. All right, so just make sure you have a Django project that you want to work with. Now, the next thing that I want us to do is to go ahead and install Gunicorn into our requirements of TXT file. And this is just going to further serve as an option that you can utilize if you want to build onto your Docker image and, for example, use Docker Compose, etc. At least you have this package in place. And just to give you some insight, so Gunicorn or Gunicorn, okay. Combining it with Docker is going to enable us to run a production-ready Django map that can be seen as being highly scalable, maintainable, and portable. So let's go ahead and install this. So we can copy it, and you want to head on over to your terminal, whether it's in VS Code, for example, or wherever you have a terminal link to your project open, and within your virtual environment, you want to install Gunicorn. So let's go ahead and install it. There we go, it's been installed. Perfect. Next thing that you want to do is you want to head on over to Visual Studio Code or whichever IDE or text editor that you're utilizing. And we want to now go on with the process of creating our Docker file. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a requirements.txt file. And the reason for this is so that we can install all of the packages within our Docker file. And then our Docker image is going to grab those packages and run it. So what you can do is you can go ahead and in your terminal, you can go ahead and say pip freeze greater than, then you want to say requirements.txt and that's going to create a requirements.txt file in our base directory for our Django project. So as we can see here, we have a requirements.txt file with all of our packages slash dependencies listed accordingly as we can see. Okay, so make sure you've got that set up. That's very important. Now we want to create our Docker file. So in our base directory, in other words, where we see our requirements.txt file, for example, we can go ahead and create a new file and it's going to be called Docker file. Okay, so make sure you go on ahead and create your Docker file. Now we want to follow a list of steps. So just a little bit on a Docker file. So a Docker file is basically a text document that contains all the instructions and commands for building an image. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add an operating system. And to do so, we can head on over to Docker Hub to find a Linux operating system that is Python based. So what we can do is we can go on ahead and head on over to the following site. Like I mentioned, I'll add all of the relevant links 
in the description below for this video. So here we have a, the Python Docker image, and as we scroll down, we can see that there are many tags available. Now, each of these, these tags here, as we can see, is referenced by the Python version here on the left. So here we have some early beta versions, such as those listed under Python 3.13, 3.12, 3.11, 10, 9, all the way to 8. So depending on the Python version that you use, okay, you can go ahead and select that accordingly. Then we also have categories or relevant tags associated to those versions, such as Bullseye, Slim, Slim Bookworm, Bookworm, Alpine, etc. Now, all of these are set with their own unique set of perks, so their advantages, disadvantages, it all depends on your application, your size, and all of that. Now, I don't want to go into too much, too much depth here because I don't want to confuse you. So we're just going to choose a stable and strong tag that is good for a large variety of applications. And that's going to be uh, bullseye, which is uh, den denoted by dash bullseye, depending on the Python version that you have. Now I'm using Python 3.11. If you're using 3.12 or 3.9, okay, what you can do is you can choose one of those tags for you. I'll show you an example. So I'm going to use this one here, Python 3.11 at a dash bullseye. So I'll go to my Docker file and to set it up, I'm going to say from, then I'm going to say Python colon, and then you want to say 3.11 dash bulls I. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and set that up. Next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and set the following command, which is going to be env then it's going to be Python, then you want to say buffered equals one. And this is going to ensure that any Python output is sent to our container logs, which can be helpful for debugging various errors. After which you want to create a working directory. And in this case, I'm going to stipulate it as work dir. So that's what you're going to want to set. And my project's called elevate. So I'm going to say my work dir directory is going to be an elevate. So forward slash, and I'll say elevate. Next thing that you want to do is, since we are in our working directory here, we want to go ahead and copy our requirements.txt file to our Docker file. So what you can do is you can say copy, and then you want to say requirements, okay, dot txt, space, dot. So we want to copy all of the packages within our requirements.txt file in our current directory, hence the dot for context. After which we want to then specify in our Docker file that we want to run all of our packages within our requirements.txt file after we've copied them. So what you can do is you can go ahead and say run pip3 install dash r and then you want to install your requirements.txt file. After which we want to copy all of our files and folders from our main project directory, which is right here. So to do so, you can just go ahead and say copy space dot space dot. So make sure you don't forget that process there. After doing so, we want to actually run our Django application. And in order to do so, we need to add a command which can be instantiated by CMD. So that's going to be referring to our command. So let's go ahead and do just that. So it's going to be CMD. Then we want to say Python manage.py run server. And then what we want to do is we want to make our application available from outside the container. That's the reason for the four zeros. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say 0 0.0.0.0. 0 .0. So these are the um, four zeros that are foreshadowing. And we want to ensure that we can run the port as normal on port 8000 for Django. So we want to expose the port and map it accordingly to port 8000. To do so, we can add in our colon and say 8000. Okay, so again, those four zeros is a special way of ensuring that our application is available from outside our container, hence the reason for it. All right, so this is how we can go ahead and build our, um, how we can build our Docker file with the relevant commands that are necessary. So make sure you've got this all set up and into place accordingly. After you've done so, we can go ahead and build our Docker image. So what you can do is head on to your command prompt and you want to type the following command, which is docker build dash T 
and that stands for a tag and we are going to build a docker image called elevate and it's going to be based on the context so we need to add in the period at the end so space and then dot once you press enter what you're going to do is you're going to build your docker image now this process can take some time because we're using a very uh how can i say it um involved um, a docker tag here for our operating system so bullseye so it's quite um, stable and it's a heavyweight you could say um, python based docker image that we are utilizing for our operating system so what we want to do is we just want to wait for it to build our docker image this can take some time so what we want to do is just give it some time all right so welcome back so as we can see here our docker image was built so you'll see an image has been written now to check that this docker image has been built what you can do is you can head on to docker desktop and as you can see here we have our docker image that has been built so if you're seeing this well done you've successfully built your first docker image now the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually go on ahead and run our um, docker image so we're going to transform our docker image to be ran as a docker container essentially so we'll see it now in this section here so what we can do is we can go ahead and navigate to containers and now the command for running our uh, docker container is as follows so let's clear this up and you want to say docker run dash p so that's going to be on the port so we're going to specify um, a particular port to which we want to run our Django application. So this can be anything. Um, it has to be for, um, uh, how can I say, for numbers though. So in our case, I'm going to run it on port 8888, an example, and it's going to be mapped to port 8000. And of course, it's going to be based on my Docker image. And I tag that as elevate, as we can see here. So make sure you refer to that particular image. And I'm just going to save it right there. And now we want to press enter. And that's going to go ahead and create a Docker container for us. So let's just give it a moment here to set everything up accordingly as it should. Okay, now as you'll notice, something has happened in our container section. So if we minimize our terminal, we can now see here that we are running a Docker container here based on the following image that we created. It's currently running. We can also see the container memory usage here, CPU usage, etc. when it was last started, and we can see where it is currently available. So we can go ahead and click on the following here on this port and here we can see our Django application here running as a Docker container on localhost which is essentially um, port 8000 and it's been mapped as we can see here accordingly as 88888 that's the port that we are setting it up accordingly as we stipulated. So that's how you can run your Docker container essentially. Okay so that's how you can do that. Now the next thing that I want to show you is how you can clean your Docker resources. So in other words, stop your um, container, delete your container and delete your image. And then of course to clear your cache. So let's start off with stopping the container. So you can go ahead and click here on this checkbox and you can go ahead and click and say stop selected items. And that's going to stop your Docker container. So this is going to take a moment. So you're just going to have to be patient as the process unfolds. And then I'm going to show you how to delete it. So we can see now status exited 137. It's now grayed out. You can see the container, it was green before. It's still selected, but if it's not selected, reselect it. And then you can say delete, or you can click on the bin icon. So I'm gonna say delete and say delete forever. And there we go, our Docker container was deleted. Now let's go to our images here. So let's say we want to delete our image. We can go ahead and click on the image here by the checkbox. And it's very simple. You can just delete it and say delete forever. Okay, next thing that I would highly advise you do is also to clear your cache. So to do so, you can head on over to your terminal. Let's clear this up. And you wanna say Docker system prune. And you wanna see why, okay? And this is going to remove all stop containers, all networks not used by at least one container, all dangling images and an unused build cache. So let's just say why for yes. It's gonna take a moment. So the longer it takes, the more in the cache you have set. So we can see here, it just cleared everything in the cache here and we can see the total space that's been reclaimed. So that's how you can go ahead and clean your Docker resources. 
All right, so that is pretty much uh, most of what you need to know in this tutorial just to get started with Docker, to build your Docker image, to run your Docker container, set up Docker desktop. But there's just one more thing I want to go through that's going to be very important, and that is how you can manage your environment variables. So you're probably wondering why I didn't cover this earlier. So the reason as to why I did not cover this earlier is because essentially speaking, if you are going to run your Docker images in a cloud-based environment, such as on ECS in um, AWS, for example, what you're going to want to keep in mind is that you're going to want to inject your environment variables. Okay, so in other words, what you would usually do is you're going to build your Docker image without your secret um, keys, your uh, all the sensitive API information. So essentially, you're not going to be able to run that Docker um, container locally because you don't have that sensitive data in your application. So it's essentially going to break in a way, you could say. So you're going to have to inject it within your cloud service provider for it to be for it to run successfully as a Docker container. So in other words, what I'm telling you here is when you build your Docker image, you're going to want to make sure that you remove your sensitive information from your Docker image, okay? And it will be built properly. It will be built fine without an issue, but it's not going to run properly because you're going to have to find a way to inject it. And usually when you go ahead and deploy your application with your Docker image, you're going to have the opportunity to inject your environment variables. So when it runs, it's going to pick up those environment variables and inject it into your application to run. That's the reason why I didn't go over it because we wouldn't have been able to run our Docker container, but it, I just wanted to go through that first so you can see the process, okay? Right, so let's go ahead and manage our environment variables. So there are many ways to do this. I'll just show you one way. So you can head on over to your settings.py file. And what you want to do is you want to import OS right at the top of your settings.py file. Then you want to look for something that is deemed sensitive within your application. So for example, here I have a secret key that is sensitive. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it as is. And I'm going to paste it elsewhere outside of my application. So in a notepad, for example, and I can go ahead and remove this as is. Now what we want to do is we want to set up our um, security key in terms of it as an environment variable. So we can go ahead and say secret underscore key equals, then we want to say os dot environ dot get. And here within parentheses, it's going to take in two argument, two parameters. So the first is going to be the secret, is going to be the environment variable that you define in the cloud platform that you're utilizing. So let's say, like I mentioned, you're using AWS and you're using the ECS um, Elastic Container Service. The environment variable that you set there, okay, needs to be what you set here. So it's going to be secret, for example, underscore key. And that needs to pertain to what you have set up right here. So this secret key is what you're going to add into your cloud service provider. So if you're using ECS, you're going to inject it as is. And what's going to happen is the secret key that you add in, for example, right there, needs to correlate to what you've set here, to what is also set as the first parameter here, it needs to be identical or else what's going to happen is your container is not going to be able to distinguish which environment variables you want injected within your application. Now, by default, you need to add in a second parameter. So via comma, you're going to add in an empty string here. And that's just how this os.environment.get method works. So basically what it does is it checks if the environment variable secret key exists in the environment. If it doesn't, it's just going to set that, um, that um, value of that environment variable to, how can I say, an empty string, so an empty value. Okay, so that's just something important to keep in mind. So that's how you would go about managing your environment variables. Now, of course, what you would do next is you would build your Docker image. However, you're not going to be able to run it, um, how can I say, locally, because you're going to have to inject it. So essentially speaking, once you go ahead and, for example, create 
and set up your Docker container, there will be an option to inject your environment variables and you're just going to want to inject your environment variables. So in other words, this you would set as your key value pair. Just make sure that the key that you set for your environment variable here is going to match whatever you state right here. That's the important thing. So please take note of that if you are expanding onto this video when you are managing your environment variables. Very important. So you'll be able to build your Docker image here um, locally, for example. But if you are going to run it, make sure that you inject it into your container in the cloud service provider that you're using in that service, whether it's ECS or if you're on, for example, Azure or if you're using Google Cloud, just make sure you keep in mind that concept. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial on dockerizing our Django application and simplifying the process of getting all of that set up. So that's it, guys. And as always, thank you for the support. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.